The trending print that inspired me this week got me thinking about what prints I've done for my printer were as useful as a glass hammer and what I found to be really useful and helped make things easier. So more the merrier, let's have a look at five. Keeping your print bed clean is essential for helping items stick and one step in avoiding lifting issues you might get. This model uses a small piece of microfiber cloth and I used an old glasses cleaner and it worked brilliantly. Here's a quick spray and a wipe off and it gets rid of any dust and any dirt or oil from your fingers when you've been pulling prints off the bed. Yeah, you could use a cloth by itself, but it feels so much neater and cleaner using this. Depending on your bed, you might need one of these. My first magnetic base stuck so well, I sometimes had to peel the bed off the prints. I also needed to use a metal scraper a lot and it's pretty easy to damage your bed using that. This print has a separate blade that you can replace anytime if it gets a nick in it or it just wears out. This one worked for quite a lot of prints before I got a PEI bed. And with that bed, as long as I'm patient and let the bed cool, I don't use a scraper much anymore. But if you do need one of these, I recommend one similar with a replacement blade. This one isn't really a tool as such, but I store my filament wrapped tight in their original boxes. And even with the boxes with windows, it can be tricky to make sure I'm getting the right one out. I print these little badges that have barbs on them and can just push them into the side of the box and it makes it much easier to look over the shelves and find the color I'm looking for. I only found this one recently and it's been pretty handy. I previously used a toothpick to get into all the fans and get the little plastic hairs that can get trapped in there out. This print does a great job of getting in with the barbs and grooming your fan. Something you won't need straight away when you start out, but eventually you'll have old spools of filament that are too short to be useful. One way to get around this is to join the scraps together from a few spools. There's a few options to choose and there's even some devices you can get from sites like Timu that clamp and heat up filament to join. Whatever you choose, the key is to get a solid melt together and at the same time, keep the joint the same thickness as the rest of the filament. It's as tricky as it sounds and it's never gonna be something that you'd hang from a building on. It just needs to be strong enough so that it can go through the extruder gear and make it to the nozzle. The one that I use is this one that holds on to both pieces at the same time. Has a spot there to melt the filament with a tea light flame or I prefer a soldering iron. And then you can pull it through to keep its shape. Sometimes it needs a little persuasion with a craft knife or even a light sand and wipe all the residue off. I find doing this works better if you can slow heat up, not quite touching the soldering iron rather than a straight up fast melt of the ends and jam them together. You need to make sure it'll hold, but it's gonna be a little bit fragile. If you have a Bowden tube like me and it breaks while it's inside and you can't pull it back out, I find it's easier to leave it in and feed in new filament than to try to get it out. It means you'll get stringing because the retraction isn't going to work properly. So if you want a perfect print and you don't want stringing, you'll need to remove the Bowden from the heat block and pull it out that way. The whole process is a little fiddly, no doubt, but if you're like me and you don't like to waste filament, it's worth getting all those last pieces into something that you can use. Because of the different colors, I tend to print things that don't really matter too much or like in my video on multicolor prints, instead of manually changing filaments for multicolor, you could try and time a change with a joined filament, but good luck. Hope everyone finds those useful. Comment below, let everyone know what the tool is you've printed for your printer that you can't live without. I'll see you next time.